Okay, without any more messing around, I'm not even going to say much. In 1876, the uh, James Younger gang attempted to rob the bank in Northfield, Minnesota with disastrous results. Places for Northfield, please. unknown 22-year-old buffalo hunter. George Armstrong Custer and Wild Bill Hickok both died in 1876, and the name Jesse James was known in every household in every town in the Midwestern United States. Pursued by the Pinkertons, romanticized by the press, tolerated and protected by the people in an area where loyalty to the former Confederacy had dim little since the end of the war between the states. The James Younger gang had grown relatively unmolested for several years. In September of 1876, however, their luck ran out. Earlier that year, the gang decided to expand their operations farther afield and robbed the First National Bank of Northfield, Minnesota, a state not sympathetic to the Southern cause. September 7th, 1876, a Thursday, a day much like any other in Northfield, the town residents go about their daily lives. Joseph Haywood heads back to the First National Bank after a short meal break. Haywood has been left in charge while the bank president attends the Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia. Henry Wheeler, a medical student, home on summer vacation, on his way to his father's pharmacy. J.F. Allen, hardware merchant. Alonzo Bunker, a teller at the First National. A.R. Manning, carpenter and blacksmith, longtime resident of Northfield. Nicholas Gustafsson, newly arrived immigrant from Sweden. None of these, nor any of the other townspeople, know that the peaceful routine of Northfield is about to be shattered like a glass bottle thrown against a boulder. From the west side of town come Bob Younger, Charlie Pitt, and Frank James. Having tethered their horses behind the bank, they draw little attention as they stroll up the street. From the south, come two more men, Cole Younger and Clell Miller walk leisurely towards the bank. The last of the gang to arrive are Jim Younger, Bill Chadwell, and Jesse James. 
These men are the rear guard. They are to cover the outlaws' escape. At about 2.15 on this cloudy afternoon, the stage is set and the drama about to unfold. Bunker, the outlaws decide to give up the money and get out of town. Mr. Allen, who first sounded the alarm, has been passing out guns and ammunition from the back of his store to anyone willing to fight the outlaw gang. dead in the streets. Of those who escaped, all but Jesse are wounded, and the money in the bank is safe. The once powerful and seemingly indestructible James Younger gang is no more. It has died on the streets of Northfield, Minnesota, and it has died in vain. But victory over the outlaw band has not come without cost. In the bank lies the body of J.L. Haywood, and on the street, Nicholas Gustafson, whose only transgression against the would-be robbers was not understanding English. Two weeks later, four of the six gang members who escaped are caught near Medallion. Charlie Pitts is killed, and all three youngers are captured and sent to prison for life. Jesse and Frank James escaped. They were forced into temporary retirement by the defeat at Northfield. They made a few attempts to revive the gang with new members, but met with limited success. On April 3rd of 1882, the epic saga of the James Younger gang came to a brutal end. Jesse Woodson James, hero to many, villain to others, was killed in his own home by Robert Ford. The final chapter was written, the book closed. And the Arizona Gunfighters have brought you another episode from our historic past. Shooting off a lot of ammo that uh, roughly 250 rounds. Oh. Anyway, 
Thank you for being here. Come back at 3.30. We will do a story about John Henry Holiday, Doc Holiday, and then we'll show you what really happened in that vacant lot off Fremont Street near the OK Corral.